Coming up on today's gardening show, I'll be preparing the last of Caroline's beds. So I better get on with it. Come back and have a look when it's done. Caroline will be getting physical with her grow bags as she transplants her tomatoes. We'll be having an update on how those basil cuttings are doing. And I'll make a table in less than five minutes. Time has come. This area here, which is a little bit of a storage area, is going to become the place where I put my grow bags. You can see all the essentials for having a drink down the garden at the end of a very hot and sweaty day. And so I have to clear this side now and I'll show you what I do with my grow bags to beat them up. And why I beat them up? Hmm, is it as bonkers as it sounds? Why did I do that to my grow bag? Simple reason, grow bags tend to be stacked in the garden centre, 20 high, and they can press down and press down, and they really haven't got much air in amongst the soil. So by throwing them around a bit, beating them up a bit, even give them a kick, it loosens up all that soil, gets all the aggression out of you if you're feeling particularly aggressive, and it's much better for the tomato plants. So because this grow bag hasn't got any supports at the moment, I do have this really clever system. I'll show you how it works. It's just these wire things. What do you do with them? I'll show you. It's really easy. Pop them under the grow bag at each planting station. Ignore the fact I still haven't managed to get that big grass root out. That goes there. And finally, there. Next thing to do, oops, sorry, I'm knocking the camera. The next thing to do is to cut these squares out. And now the magic happens. You simply take these two wire pieces, push them together so that they're overlapping. Try not to break your greenhouse roof. And then pop your support for your plant in and let go. And there you have one perfectly supported stick for your tomatoes. Now, not everybody does this, but I like to get three pots and pop them in where the plants are going to go, roughly. It seems a bit odd, but when I planted the tomatoes and I want to water these bags, you can end up a lot of the time with the water overflowing, going all over the floor. You've wasted the cans of water you've carried and the poor plant isn't getting enough food. So by putting the pots in there, I can water the pots and the water will go straight through to the middle of the bag instead of just the surface and then rolling off. Right, let's plant some tomato plants. So the three tomato plants that are going in this bag are Bashful, Doc and Dopey. I've given them a good water. You can see there's lots of water coming out of the underneath of them. I like to give the roots a good chance before they actually go into the grow bag so they're not struggling as soon as they go in. They've got a bit of time to drink up the moisture around the plant before they have to have spread their roots into the grow bag. And now 
now what we need to do water the pots yes i know it looks crazy but water your empty pots so here we have our tomato plants there's dopey there's doc and there's bashful I'll pop a link below to the video that shows you why on earth we have some tomato plants named after the seven dwarves. Now, one thing I like to do, if you haven't got all that pent up aggression out of your system now by beating up your grow bags, get a knife and just put a couple of little stabs in the bottom of the grow bag. The chances are, if you're very careful with your watering, you'll never need it. But if you do accidentally overwater, rather than the roots sitting in all that wet, soggy mess and not being happy, It'll drain out. Good luck, little wolves. Well, here's another project for me. We have our hammock up there behind the apple tree with all this beautiful blossom on. But it's nice to have somewhere to put a drink or a plate. And this was a table. As you can see, it's a bit rusty. But I reckon it'll take another good five years before it'll rust through. And it did have a glass top, but that's long gone. That's smashed. So I'm now going to make a replacement top and I'm going to use these two offcuts from some work I did on some decking just below the seating area there under the conifer there's a piece of decking that I laid so come back in five minutes and I'll show you what I've done Well, here we have it, literally a five minute table. Hammer and a saw, a couple of old planks and a rusty bit of table legs. If it does the job, that's where I'm going to be having my cup of tea and a sandwich while I work in the garden. Hope you like the idea. Hope you have some ideas of your own and go for it. At the end of the day, it's only for me and the wife. Nobody else is looking. Well. Perhaps a couple of thousand of you. But let me know what you think in the comments. You may remember me taking cuttings of basil to make new plants for nothing. And this is the progress we've had. I popped the cuttings into my glass and if you look in there you can see all the roots. These cuttings are really healthy. Now before I plant these out I want to show you some I planted out a few days ago. This is one of the pots. I'm going to put this on my kitchen windowsill and that way then if I just want a little bit of basil I can just pinch out the tips which I'm going to do anyway because I want these to push out but that's not really enough because we eat a lot of vegetables a lot of pasta and I'm going to want much more basil than that so this little pot isn't going to do it for me so I'm going to use this size pot I'm going to put three plants in each pot and get the roots really nicely established in the soil now because they're in water at the moment they need to get a grip on the soil and then I'm going to plant out an area in one of the beds in the garden so I can have lots and lots of basil I can use it in cooking I can make some pesto Ooh, anything I want because it's not costing me anything now I should show you monkey at this point he wants to send a message to everybody he says that he feels he is a social influencer which is what they call somebody on youtube who has an effect on people and they look to them for advice sometimes in difficult times now monkey panda has decided that he should start wearing a face mask and gloves when he's out and about just so he can be an example to show you all just how stylish you can look when you're wearing your personal protection outfit He's got little pears on here and a pair of marigold gloves that had a hole in now has been converted into some nice gloves for Panda to protect his hands too. 
Right, so let's fill this pot. Not too full and not too compacted. Now let's get all these lovely basil plants out and have a look at them. Oh, there's just a little one. He's not doing so well. He'll be okay though. Right, now if you're going to do this like me, don't take too long because these, it's not a hot day here, but if it's a very hot day in your greenhouse, these are going to shrivel in no time. And then use my very special implement, which is my finger, make a hole, put that one in place, and then another one over here. And finally, ooh, that's a long one over here. Now that is going to be sticking up too far, so I'm going to be really drastic here. Snip the end off. Pop him in and then top up with soil. Now this soil is quite wet because it had dried out, we had such a hot day and so I've decided I've already put the water in, so a little tiny bit of water to settle the earth around the roots will be all it needs. Like that. Now I'm not going to put this in direct sunshine, I'm going to put it underneath my table so that it's got chance to get those roots working before it gets the effect of needing to draw extra water. So under it goes. And let's do another one. This little one, he'll be fine, in he goes. He's rather dirty now from my hands. Firm them in. Now I'm only going to give these a day or two and then I'm going to come along and pinch out the tips. If I show you there, you can see there are little tiny leaves starting to grow. So I'll be taking these tips out, but I don't want to shock them just yet. It's been quite an upheaval going from a glass of water to being put in the soil. And I've just had an idea. I've got this little bit of root we chopped off. I wonder if that will grow. Let's give it a go. So we put some soil in there. We poke the root in. Just leave the very tip poking out there. A little bit of water. And let's see what happens. I wonder if that will grow. That's an interesting experiment. Let's go on a little greenhouse tour, see what's going on. As you can see, Monkey Panda is busy mudlarking in his little pool. We've got some tomato plants that still haven't gone in, but they're going to go in today because I can't leave it any longer. We've got some larkspur coming here. They took forever to grow. I didn't think they were going to, but they're popping through nicely now. And we've got some sweet peppers. Some of these beans are stragglers. I left them in here to try to give them a bit more of a boost and they are slowly starting to catch up with the ones I planted outside. Over here we have lots more larks, but I'm really looking forward to having a big huge swathe of these in the garden all flowering at the same time. More beans that never came, but they are just starting to pop their heads through so I'm not too worried there. These courgettes are not doing very well. The soil on the top has actually gone green and still no sign of them. Let's have a little dig, is it? I don't recommend you do this. It could ruin your seed if it is starting to grow. Aha, there's my seed. Let's have a look what's going on there. Let's take it out. Mm, it is starting to grow. Pop it back in, but remember, don't do that to your seeds. It's not recommended. We've got... Some hollyhocks coming through, some foxgloves popping through, lots of marigolds that I'm about to plant in my beds. We have some more cosmos waiting to go out. They're getting nice and strong now. I've planted them into a bigger pot sections. And then we got some more courgettes here and here. Let's take them up and show you. Nice healthy looking courgette. And nice healthy looking squash called Avalon. These are some of the hollyhocks. So if I bring these over, let's have a look at these. Pop them by here. These are the seed leaves and then this is a true leaf and this really does look like a hollyhock leaf. All four of them got a true leaf coming through. 
I'm really looking forward to these next year. They won't flower this year, being biennial, but next year I should get some fabulous spikes of beautiful colours. We've got one very leggy tomato plant here. And one very sickly looking pepper plant. I don't think he's going to come to much. Over here we have the tomato plants with the marigolds that I planted a few days ago and they're doing really well. Some marigolds in here ready but I haven't planted up the rest of the tomato plants. As I said that will be happening later. We have a few more marigolds nicely grown on there. A good size. They'll be going in here. And that's what the kitchen garden is looking like out of the greenhouse. Let's go and have a look. Here's the bed you saw us planting last week on top of the compost heap. You'll notice this soil is quite dry. That's because it's getting very cold in the nights. And so I don't want these plants to have to struggle with cold, wet soil around their feet. It's not too dry down deeper, so they'll be fine there. This one's suffering a little because we had a frost last night and the night before, but we are putting buckets over the top. But the first night the bucket blew away, so it damaged the plant. One more night of frost and we should be okay. The lettuce are quite happy. Over here in the bed Phil planted for me, I have the sweet corn already in here. There's a squash there. I have some fennel planted there and some peas there. They're not doing anything at the moment. And marigolds everywhere. I've got lots of little marigold plants, so I'm popping them in wherever I can. My carrots are doing well. These are Royal Chantonnay. They're a short, stubby carrot, so they're very good for growing in pots. They're lovely and strong. What's going on in this scruffy corner of the kitchen garden? There's an old bag with a plant growing out the top of some compost. Well, this is actually some potatoes I put in the bottom of the bag in a little bit of compost. When the shoots came up, I put more compost in and now these shoots are long. Later I'm going to put more compost in on top. I'll fold the bag up like that and eventually we'll keep filling and filling and filling until the bag is quite tall. And then we'll harvest the potatoes and it'll be really easy to do because there'll be no digging, just empty in a bag. I did the same with this tub too, but this was just some garden soil. Now I was suspicious that the mice had been stealing my beans when I planted them. I think we've got some evidence. Look at that. The mice are definitely stealing my beans and that's why I don't have any beans coming from seed outdoors. Little monkeys. No sign of the leaks yet. They'll be along soon. My runner beans are coming on nicely. This here, this cross beam, well, it's not really a beam is it, it's too thin, but this cross member here is a great place for the birds to perch. And so they perch on there and then they poop on my bean plants. Look at that. But they're growing nicely. If we pop over here, here are the French beans. These are coming nicely too. I probably need to tie these on. Let's have a look at my sweet corn. Now this was looking much better last week. Unfortunately it's been very cold. We have covered them but they're not very happy being left to be so cold. Even so I think they'll survive. They just might not pick up as quickly as I'd have liked. Over here you can see my transplanted lettuce. These were the first three to go in, then these three, and they are staggering really nicely because I don't want them all coming at the same time. So this one is going to be ready before the rest and I'm really looking forward to trying it. The onions are doing well. I have to settle down this evening when the sun has gone down and do some weeding on these because it's amazing just how quickly the weeds come through when you don't want them to. Not that you'd ever want them to, I don't suppose. And this is going to be the place where the mice have stolen the most beans. I planted beans in here to grow up this lovely wigwam. Look very stylish, but nothing's happening. I have this bean that I planted from a tub, and in the middle, because it was looking so bare, I put this chive and I put some marigolds and some lobelia around the edge to look pretty. But I think that is going to be it. When it comes to beans, I'll have to put more into here from the plants I have in the greenhouse. Fortunately, I do have some spare. 
Right, we've got things planted in three out of four of the beds now, and this one needs turning over. As you can see, we've dug around the edge, piled it to the centre, and I've done some repair work. Now, it's interesting that this corner, that piece of timber is virtually Ooh, brand new. Look at that piece of timber. Because that is an offcut from where I put the new fence panel up, and then reused all the timber from there after the storm to do repairs. But over in that corner, the block I've used there is over 20 years old. So whether it's an offcut from a few weeks ago or whether it's something you've had for 20 years in the garden, it makes no difference. If it's usable, use it. That's what I say. We could do with some repairs on the boards, but I've run out of boards. <laughs> so we've just had to make do with the rotten timber. So let's turn this over now and then Caroline will have access to all of her beds for planting. So I'd better get on with it, come back and have a look when it's done. Right, there it is, last bed done. Last of the weeds out, well, not really. That lot has come out of that bed, but there's probably plenty more gonna pop up from time to time. But I've certainly given Caroline a head start by removing all of those. Dug down two spades, aerated the soil, the level has come up, it's all ready for planting. Somebody was asking for the names of the plants in my garden and I can't remember all of them. I do remember some and these, Virginia or Virginia, these are elephant ears we call them. They've got a lovely pink flower on but this one unfortunately was buried underneath the tree so didn't have much light for the last year or two so hasn't really flowered this year. I'll probably try taking some cuttings off these ready for next year to have some nice fresh looking plants. Here we have lots of wildflowers and my daffodil leaves are to be cut off now. More cosmos in the garden. And here we have a lungwort or a pulmonaria. They call them that apparently because the leaves have spots that look like lungs if you were to look at lungs. Mm, not a very pleasant thought, but they do have a really pretty delicate flower which doesn't look much in the height of summer you wouldn't even notice it but in the spring it's a real welcome piece of colour to tell you that the weather is getting better. This year is sedum. It's a succulent, almost feels like cabbage these leaves but I wouldn't eat them. They have a pink flower on I think August September these actually flower. They can be a bit floppy too so I'll probably stake these at some point and in the cage is the wild crazy daylily. That loves my garden. You split them and within two years they're like this, they're huge. So I'll be splitting that one again in September, but that is going to be beautiful when it flowers. These are Euphorbia. They're very pretty with their delicate flowers, but if ever you have them in your garden, be very careful because when you snap them, a milky fluid comes out that is really, really acidic and will burn your eyes. You could even end up in hospital. So take care with these things. I'm slowly trying to eradicate these from the garden because I don't like them. Here we have our rhododendron that I've trimmed. As you can see, the flowers are going over now. This is palm. I have no idea what this palm is called. I always cut the pointy bits off. I know it doesn't look pretty, but if I show you here, these are really savage pointy bits. They'd easily have your eye out. So I'm sorry, the plant has to be chopped and I've been doing it for years and it hasn't affected it at all. They just go a little bit brown on the ends. There's a bee visiting the Aquilegia. I think some people call these granny's bonnets. Don't disturb the bee. And that's what they look like underneath. Very pretty. And this, I think they call it a flame bush or a burning bush. And this has like plumes of yellow flowers come out, which are a real contrast to the leaves. It's a bit of a monster though. I cut it down to the ground every few years and it comes back up with a vengeance. I'm not sure what these are, but they're very pretty and there's a little hoverfly. Let's have a look at our pears. Oh, they're coming nicely now. Our first year to have pears. I put my hand there. Oh, mind that leaf. You can see the size on that pear. He's coming along nicely. This year we call snow on the mountain. It copes with extremely dry soil, which is why it tends to grow in the walls. Again, I don't know what the real name for it is or the botanical name. And we have some pansies. Here I have an eryngium. This is really prickly, so I'm not going to touch it. 
that has really interesting flowers. I'll show you when it comes out. And we've got a big, huge poppy here. The flowers on that are quite impressive too. This is London Pride. Very delicate and fluffy flowers. It's great for ground cover. As you can see, not many weeds could get through that. And a few little animals I popped in. These are my pinks. They're very dry here. So I'm going to take some cuttings off these from the bottom. Chop this around here so this nice fresh looking bit will still be there and the rest will be cleared and this can grow down then the way it used to be all green all the way and we got this which is a succulent no idea what it's called but that tends to grow on its own too no matter what you do to it and this is a creeping jenny which my friend gave me a few years ago and i'm trying to eradicate from the garden but she really does creep around the place now these it said on the pot pansies but they're so small, I think they're probably or possibly violas. Look at the colours. They're amazing. And here we have some fuchsias. Just starting to sprout. I massacred this bush, chopped it right down, you can see. But it's still quite happy. Lots and lots of little sprouts coming all over it. In another week or so, these will be big, huge yellow candelabra shapes absolutely stunning but then it just goes a bit miserable and sickly looking after that but it's well worth tolerating for the show it gives me in a few weeks time oh there's a thrush in the tree i think it must be a baby one certainly not afraid of us keep on the fly there he goes right finally i'm going to show you my azalea now this is quite bright seeing it like this but next week when i show you when this has opened out it is absolutely amazing this is like a luminous orange or coral color inside and it's stunning but unfortunately in the wrong place i wish i planted it further back over there because now it overhangs the lawn i don't really want to cut it so it's a choice do i cut it or do i move it i don't want to move it in case it dies hmm i'll have to think about that one. Oh look just realized it's open up there. Isn't that beautiful? And there. This is a real treat when you see it all in blossom. Well, it's time for me to have a nice cup out now. I've done my bit and hopefully you've enjoyed going through the garden with us as we've created opportunities to grow more stuff and seen what's already growing. If you have enjoyed it don't forget give us a thumbs up and best of all share it with others who you think would enjoy it and of course make sure you come back again to join us and if you subscribe it costs nothing and you'll get a notification when the next gardening video is out or the mudlarking video or even our live show on saturday evening nine o'clock uk time so hope you'll join us again soon and until then bye bye